I wanted to do stand up a lot, like from a longer time before I did. I, as soon as I started improv, I was keen to do stand up. I just didn't have the proverbial bollocks, really. I bought a book, right, which is pretty obviously about suicide called Final Exit. I bought it off Amazon. When I got to the checkout, they asked if I wanted it gift wrapped. <laughs> well, I've always told stories based on stuff that's really happened to me, and everything in that show did really happen, or, you know, even sort of the little anecdotes and things that seem ludicrous, all stuff. So I, you kind of see them, and you, you'd perhaps change them in a little bit to make them all stand up y, shorten things, and, uh, and tell them in a certain way. But actually, yeah, I think that has always been the case. But to talk about stuff as personal as, and, and perhaps as poignant as what's in this show is new. And fireworks can be long old nights, can't they, anyway? And Hatter is cold and shit and grumpy and that sort of grump that a six-year-old can get in. And I said, well, we probably should have bought us some gloves. And what Mum said totally naively is, what she needs is a muff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to see doing stand-up as therapy. I think that's really indulgent and it's not fair on the audience. Um, and I learned that when... Uh, so I talk about a breakup in the show and if I, w I did stand-up straight after that, uh, I had to stop for a little bit because I realised I was actually just doing it as an excuse not to be thinking about horrible things. And that's not fair on an audience. You're not, it doesn't make a good comic, someone who's heartbroken and ruined and just yeah really go <laughs> inside that means you put on even more of a facade but i think once you come to terms with stuff being able to talk about it yeah it's quite cathartic but I, it's not a breachy show i don't think therapy's for everyone at all because it certainly makes things harder for it makes things easier because it makes you dig up all sorts of stuff about yourself that's totally fair dudes if you don't want to know i think um but the best analogy for it i think in a positive light is if you imagine like on a treadmill uh, it's only actually once it starts to hurt a little bit that you think oh this is probably the bit where it's starting to get good for me uh, but then it starts to hurt a little bit more and you think, oh, I'd just rather stop, right? <laughs> but then if you carry on and 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 carry on, then eventually you break the pain barrier and you get this rush of elation and freedom that I've read about. <laughs> Steve Martin wrote an amazing book called Stand Up and Deliver and it's ten years before you're really brilliant. So I know I've got a long way to go, man, until I'm... Are you yeah. quite excited about the next seven years then? Yeah, it, yeah, love it. No, well, I don't... I couldn't imagine doing anything else now. Dear Dominic Raab, I'm a feminist and I don't hate men. I just hate you. <laughs> if you do what you do and actually it turns out, you know, this batch of promoters isn't enough to make you a living like it, then I'm down with that.